Hi ladies and gentlemen, my name is Troy Allen Gallant. Welcome to Trigger Time TV presented by Crossbreed Holsters. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. In today's episode, Kerry Davis is going to talk about field expedient tourniquets. Hey folks, Kerry Davis from Dark Angel Medical here to talk with you about a subject that has been utilized in many instances like uh, the Boston bombings, austere environments like that, the improvised tourniquet. Now, the improvised tourniquet is by no means a, 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 a viable replacement for a commercial tourniquet, but in those situations where you may not have a commercial tourniquet, you gotta dance with who brung you. So you gotta use whatever you got on hand. That's the important thing. Well, what is an improvised tourniquet though? It's anything you have on scene that you can utilize as, an, as a tourniquet. Uh, a tourniquet, as we've talked about in past segments, is designed to do one thing, and that's keep blood inside the body. That's something we've got to understand with this improvised tourniquet. It's got to mimic the same actions as those commercially available tourniquets that you may use, that you may carry in your everyday carry kit, or if that kit's not with you, what you wish you had with you. Now, improvised tourniquets need to be at least an inch wide. At least an inch wide, because what that does is it increases the surface area that's being compressed. The more surface area we compress, the better chance we have of arterial occlusion. The, more, the better chance of arterial occlusion, the better we're going to stop that bleed. That's the most important thing we've got to remember with all this. Now, I don't want to use anything less than an inch wide, like parachute cord, electrical cord, USB cords, charging cables, shoelaces, anything like that, because what that does, it forms a ligature or a garrot type effect on the tissue. You can actually cut the tissue and damage it versus uh, increase in survivability. We don't want to remember the old the mil, uh, old military medical saying is primum non nocere, first do no harm. We don't want to make that injury worse than it was to start out with. We want to help out. Now, why do we want to put these improvised tourniquets on? Well, obviously, stop that life threatening bleed. If that bleeding is more than I can control with direct pressure, I want to go right to the tourniquet and get that bleeding stopped. And how am I going to do this? How am I going to accomplish to get enough pressure on there? When will I know it's stopped? When, well, it's, it's pretty apparent. If you don't have bright red bleeding, that's arterial bleeding. If you don't have that bleeding and it's not spurting out, then that's a good chance that it's stopped. You can't have any oozing, though. You can't have any oozing. You've got to get that stuff tight. You've got to get that tourniquet on high and tight. The, the higher you get it, because remember, arteries attract. Uh, uh, retract. The higher you get it, the tighter and the tighter you get it, the better chance you get that artery occluded. Now, how, how do we do that? Well, we keep tight until all that blood flow stops. And it's important to remember we have to use that. We have to get that blood flow stopped because the arteries take blood to the tissue. The veins take blood back away from the tissue. So the arteries are much harder to occlude because they're very thick and muscular. Veins are really easy to occlude. So if we shut that vein down, we're still going to have arterial blood going into that tissue and we're going to have some oozing. But in addition to that, you're going to have uh, a lot of swelling going on in that tissue and you have this covering over the, over the muscle bodies called fascia. It's real thin and real strong. And what can happen is if all that blood can't escape, it doesn't have a return route, I, uh, via the veins, then it's going to start swelling. Once it swells so much, there's going to be a lot of pressure and it can only stretch so far. Then all of a sudden the pressure is going to start building within and that's going to create an injury in that tissue by compartment syndrome. Now the injury may have been a salvageable injury initially, uh, even when the tourniquet was placed, if it was placed properly. But if the properly, if the tourniquet was placed improperly, you can build help. up that pressure in there, that dangerous pressure, and you can end up actually losing the limb. That would have been a salvageable injury. Now it's important to utilize things from my environment. I need to be able to look around me and go, hey, what can I use in my environment that I can mimic the exact action of this commercial tourniquet? But remember, like I said earlier, this is no replacement for a commercial tourniquet. Now, if it is effective, if you do have an improvised tourniquet on there that is effective, Add an additional uh, commercial tourniquet either directly above it or directly below it because that's going to just increase, one, your surface area, and two, increase your overall chances of survivability in case that improvised tourniquet did loosen up, you would actually have another tourniquet in place. And again, two is one, one is none. There's nothing wrong with that. Anytime you move this victim, make sure you reassess this tourniquet just like you would with any, any commercial tourniquet. Reassess that victim. We've got to do this to increase survivability. 
keep a kit with you at all times. We've got to keep a kit with us. That's important. If you don't have a dark kit with you, and you should, have something with you that you know you can utilize in your outside environment. Life happens at the speed of life. Life happens in a blink of an eye. The time chooses you. Will you be ready? If you have any questions, give us an email at info at darkangelmedical.com, and most of all, stay safe. Trigger Time TV is brought to you by Crossbreed Holsters, Osprey Armaments, Troy Industries, Troy Defense, BCM, Bravo Company USA, Caltech, Nemo Arms, Tactical Walls, Dark Angel, Mission First Tactical, EOTech, Mayflower Research and Consulting, Streamlight, Wiley X, and Freedom Munitions.